I have driven by here a bunch of times and never stopped either. And you'd think I would because they've got this crazy dinosaur and half of a VW Beetle driving in. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and nomads wear fezes, right? I got this one at a flea market this weekend. I just wanted to say hello to all of my viewers and subscribers. If you're a viewer but not a subscriber, and I know there's still a lot of you folks that haven't subscribed, it is free to subscribe. All you have to do is click the button below and you can also click the bell to be notified. That way you won't miss any of my future videos. This video is about my cousin Carl and I doing a mad thrift shopping day. Okay, so I'm doing something I don't do very often. We're going into thrift stores today in Largo, Florida and thereabouts because, well, it's a fun day and I'm hanging out with my cousin. He goes by Curb Digger Carl. He's hiding behind the mask there. You might know him from uh, metal detecting and bottle digging because those are his big things, but he also likes going to the thrift stores and he looks for, oh, all sorts of cool old stuff and Hawaiian shirts. Sometimes I've got to show his collection because he's got really neat stuff. So this is Indian Rocks Thrift Center, and I found a good treasure craft set here years ago. I haven't been here for a while. Let me put on my mask, and we'll go on in. Bright colors. Interesting. Where'd you get this list? This is pretty useful. Someone online had a real nice, huh. nice five pages worth of stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, I know older stuff, but I'm not really a rag picker like this, and I know that people do well with it if they uh, find the right labels. So. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the vintage hat, because that's what I know. It's from the 19... 40s or 50s yeah yeah it doesn't have a label though sometimes it, like if they have a new york label they can be pretty good cool i tend to look more for accessories like old purses and things oh, there's Minnie mouse two dollars and fifty cents for a kid that's kind of cute but i like the accessories because everybody can wear the accessories clothes have to fit people this place has a big old fiberglass canoe Looks like a 1960s one, $500. I sold one like this for $700 at an estate sale once, so that's actually a pretty good price, but a little too big for me to manage. That must be 15 feet. I've known people who've found really good art in thrift stores, so I always take a look. These are signed edition prints by Paul Wood, and you see the signature down there, 45 each. I don't really do a lot of wildlife art. Oh yeah, that's a nice old piece. You find these in Florida because people brought these down from the Midwest. I mean, the one on the left there, that's East Lake from like 1880, 1890. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, $80 as yeah, is. Yeah, that looked to me old, but... Yeah. Like I think the cool. top and the bottom might... Maybe they're a marriage because the finish is a different color. That's what I was wondering too. But they look right for the age. I don't know. It could just be they... Maybe the bottom was in the sun and the mirror got taken off and stored too. That happens sometimes. And then this old oak chest of drawers. I mean, if you want solid old antique furniture that will actually last another hundred years for $80, you could do a lot worse. Oh yeah, you can see here because it's got the round dovetails. So that's going to be like 1880s. That was this weird sort of peg joinery that they did back then. Okay, this place has some cups and saucers, a whole lot. A whole lot of dishware, all in a row. St. Anne de Beaupre from Quebec. Fairly famous site there, and this was made, decorated in Canada in 22 karat gold. Probably made by Kittering in Ohio, though. They did a lot of that stuff. This piece is old. Some European porcelain from about 1910 with that repeating pattern, I would say. Bassett Limoges, Austria, but it's not really Limoges because it's from Austria and Limoges is from France, so that was another one where they were copying the Limoges style. It's only four dollars, but they really don't go for a lot these days. Norman Rockwell was such a famous illustrator, and the collector plates, they made a ton of Norman Rockwell plates. They have these priced at $15.95, probably because 
when they were new they were selling for about $30 each. The problem is, look at this. In addition, limited to 150 firing days. Do you know how many plates you can make in 150 days in a factory? A whole lot. And that's the problem. There are a whole lot of these. I had an estate sale where we had 300 of these and we sold about 20 at a dollar a piece and donated the rest. And these might be them. Okay, this is just from the 80s, but this fruit pattern, which is Indiana glass, it's sort of a takeoff on Delarobia by Westmoreland. I find that stuff attractive for some reason. And it looks like it's $10 for the set with the big serving bowl and the tray. Not a bad price. It might be something people are starting to collect, but they take up a lot of room, and I just bought a bunch of Blanco glass today, so I don't really have space for more. These look like they're out of the 70s when everything had words on it. Kind of like now, everything has words on it. Oh, 1980 by KM. So somebody made this in ceramic class, but they're cute. I don't know that there's really a buyer today for them. This is an old looking vase that's probably brand new. Oh yes, Home Inspirations. Made in Vietnam. Interesting how we've made our peace with Vietnam and now we're buying stuff from them. Oh, here we go. First National Bank serving Metropolis since 1864. Metropolis is Illinois, right across from Paducah, Kentucky, where Fat Bird Finds are. It's only 50 cents. I like the old house art trays. These were mostly made in Pennsylvania. Lots of banks had them done. Oh, Blue Danube. And this is the older mark, the jam pot here. The older mark has this ribbon on it, and then the later pieces have Blue Danube in kind of a block script. I've been selling a collection of this, and it sells a little at a time, but for $2, I think this is a good deal. I think I'll take this one. Tupperware is popular in Florida because it was made here originally, and so I don't expect to find good deals on it here because people here are kind of into it. Brass dining table from the 80s. Ooh, speaking of the 80s, there we go, mauve. I kind of like the shape of the chairs, I hate to admit it. See if there's any cute figurines here. So every time I show clowns, it seems very controversial. Three people say they love them and ten people say they hate them. This little girl looks old. This looks like Austrian bisque porcelain again. With the shoe, she doesn't have a mark. She's $4.50 and she's kind of cute. But I have a lot of that sort of cute stuff right now. I think I'm all right on that. Now here's the smart guy. He's looking at electronics, and that is pretty smart because a lot of good electronics come through thrift stores. But I'm looking at old electronics, and I like this radio cabinet. It's an Etna, and this would have been shortwave, so it says worldwide on it, but you can tell it's pretty busted up. It doesn't have its knobs, and for $40, it would have to be in a lot better condition to get my attention. People are taking these old ones that are broken apart though and turning them into other things which is kind of neat. They'll take this stuff out of the back and make a hinge box on it and make a little bar out of it for example. What is it a Nova Novatron 240? Yeah, it's, uh, oh it's like a studio camera yeah. setup I see because it's got the umbrella. When I did the treasure craft book we had to uh, I had to use a setup like this. Yeah it's like 39 bucks just for that. I'm not counting the lights. Huh. Yeah, I don't. I'm curious how those work. Whether they just work permanently. I know the setup I had. It was like it was charged with a certain number of flashes, and once you used it up, the lights were gone. Like they could only oh, do so many. Bulbs, that makes sense. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything in the jewelry department here. He's gonna look at knives. I'm gonna look at jewelry. This mostly looks contemporary. I'm always looking to see. Sometimes a piece of vintage will float through a place like this. Well, this is right from 1980, if you remember that song, Ring My Bell. Ring Ma Bell. High humor. Ma Bell was just about to go away. She was broken up in 1983. And I see they've got some Shawnee corn over there, but they want $50 for the casserole, which is more than I can get for it. Okay, these are twin Winton, and one of them's missing his hat, but the other one's got it. The little jar here, I think, or is he the bank? Oh yeah, he's the bank. They are competitors with Treasure Craft, so it has that same kind of look. 
twelve dollars is about right. For some reason, the companies that made cookie jars would also make banks in the seventies. That was a thing. Okay, so this is new to you thrift center, and this place is open six days a week. They've even got an outside area, which I see is where my cousin is. So we'll take a look at that. They are on a very busy street. They get a ton of traffic and they've been here a long time. And yet I have never been in here because my mom, back when she was more actively thrifting, back when she could still drive, didn't like this place. So she would never take me here. However, I think I'm going to find something here. Dick Clark, really? Never think of him being connected to psychedelic music at all. It looks interesting. Jack Nicholson, Bruce Dern. Oh, I see. So this was actually a movie. Ah, okay. And the soundtrack with The Seeds, one of my favorite bands of all times. I'll bet there's some songs I haven't heard of. Oh, The Seeds are a great band from uh, L.A. Sky Saxon was the lead singer. And they did the song Pushing Too Hard. That's the thing. Yeah, they're, that's the one they're known for the best. But they did a lot of really great music, in my opinion. I don't know, I'm taking a dab or it's Zimala. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, Italian, it looks like it's yes. well made. Oh, look, Francoma. That's neat. That's the Mayan Aztec. Oh, it's got a big old chip. That's too bad. I was actually going to ask you about this. It's been here for a couple of weeks. It's Did nice if it was. In? Yeah, it's a, it actually was a really popular pattern. It's one of the most popular of their dinnerware now because it's got a neat look to it, especially the canteens and the decanters are neat looking barware. Oh, but with the chip, sense. yeah, with the chip, that's kind of rough. This one would be done in the um, later period because the old rutile glaze would have been you'd have like a little bit of a goldish cast to it and then when uh, nixon set up the epa they closed the last rutile mines so then the australian mines were still going and they had to ship the stuff to make it from australia and it doesn't look the same oh cool here's a 1930s mixing bowl depression glass only four dollars that's just cute you know this is something that's utility wear and people like things they can use more people are cooking at home these days and you know, it's from the 1930s, so I think Hazel Atlas made this one. I think I'll take that. It's inexpensive enough, and I'm more inclined towards kitchen glass. This is $20. It is a cute 1930s pattern, and the label is Bake Oven. These were made in Ohio. It looks a lot like the Cambridge Universal potteries. In the late 70s, Treasure Craft was making little vases like this as souvenirs. It was called the Nameplate Series because there's Colorado, so this would have been sold in some tourist trap in Colorado. And yep, Treasure Craft made in the USA. I don't really have a lot of collectors for that style, but the daisies back here. This is Lefton, and it's earlier Lefton with the daisies, earlier being 1960s. And there's the George Lefton signature on the bottom. And people like these kind of funky napkin holders, but 750 I don't think there's a lot of room left in it for me. But if I break it, I get to take it anyway. This looks like lamps and housewares. This place is definitely jammed full. And protective undergarments. A lot of antique dealers use those for shipping if they're cheap enough, believe it or not, because they are, well, very nicely padded. A bust of list. The old salt. There's a precious moment. The first 31 precious moments are the original and they can be pricey. Some of the big pieces can too. The rest of them are pretty common these days. And here's the piece that looks like the best quality so far. Nicer porcelain and it's older. This is the Ardalt Company very thin porcelain uh, it says on the label and this was made in japan in the 1950s but it's priced at 12.50 and that's more than i can pay now some of these cottages can be collectible david winter cottages there was a time these sometimes sold for good money i don't think i can make any money on it at 20 dollars though this place has a lot of sales so i understand they're trying to raise money for a good cause so they start out with higher prices and then have big discounts but I have to say I'm always surprised in thrift stores that they're not necessarily a great deal less expensive than going to an antique store or a consignment store where you actually might have better quality to look at for the price. 
Now here's an afghan for five dollars and it's the herringbone pattern that I like. I know Fat Birds Finds likes these. And it's pink and olive. A little different color combination. It's only five dollars but it looks like it's a lap size and I'm getting spoiled these days. I want them to be bigger than that because you see a whole lot of these lap blanket sizes. Two dollar shaker sets. Let's see if there's any good ones. There's a lot of cute ones. There's plenty that would probably sell. Around here we like pelicans, but I don't do the plastic stoppers. Those are too new for me. These are old. They say Japan on the bottom. Little cars. They look like they're in good shape. We'll take those. Those are newer. I think I found the only old pair on the shelf. Okay, well, we'll get them. So These are the precious it? moments that I talked about. And this is why they're not more valuable. A lot of them are cute, but there are a lot of them around. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Well, if something happens to our car, we can pick up this 62 Ford and drive it the rest of the way, I guess. That's for sale. But we're actually going across the street to the thrift shop of Largo. And there is the sign. All right, let's see what we find in here. Well, this place sure has the rattan. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Wonderful. Audrey Hepburn. Sort of looks like that Palomar out of Mexico, and it is Mexican, but it's a different company. And then behind it, this little picture. Made in Czechoslovakia. Oh, okay. I have a little vase that has a similar motif with the interesting stylized birds. It's going to be 1930s, older than it looks. A green Moriaga dragonware. Not very heavy beading on this. This was made for a souvenir in Chinatown in New York City. Here's a chorus line. This is right out of the 70s. These old posters were framed up after the shows in New York and sold. And actually, it turns out the obscure shows that didn't do very well are sometimes the most valuable. Okay, so now we're going to hit this place. This is called Resale Oasis and Gallery Mall. I have driven by here a bunch of times and never stopped either. And you'd think I would because they've got this crazy dinosaur and half of a VW Beetle driving into the inside. So that's pretty great right there, don't you think? And smile, you're on camera. Well, so are you. Hello. Here's an English pub table with a couple of chairs. These are great because they're self-storing. They were made about, oh, in the teens and 20s especially. This one's been refinished. The leaves slide right out, so you get a bigger table. This one's only got two chairs. They usually have four, but it's got this nice Art Deco banding here. It's only priced at $250. I usually get about $500 for these sets. If it had all four chairs, I'd be thinking seriously about it. Not that I really need more furniture after I picked up a bunch of Haywood Wakefield this week. Here's a very tall camel seat. Camel seats are really fun. This one is priced at $195, yeah. Camel saddle, but it's a big one. This was a popular decorating thing in the 60s. They're usually used as footstools, but this one's tall enough to sit on. And there's a heavily carved desk. Looks like someone painted it rather than refinishing it. But it's got a great face with the Rococo. And this is an R.J. Horner. R.J. Horner made the really neat French Renaissance style set that was sold at Fatbird Finds that we didn't get to show you in our video, but they showed you in theirs. And this is the same company out of New York. They made very nice European styled furniture, even though they were a New York company. It's priced at $5.25, but with all the drawers and the utility as a secretary desk, that's not a bad price. And it is a good company, a good name in Victorian furniture. 
nice apothecary chest hanging there, priced at 275. That's about what these go for now. People love the little drawers. They like the mirror. Hello there. And this is going to be a combination of newer and older stuff. Little Majolica pitcher down there for $35. These lamps are kind of groovy. $90 for the pair, that's not bad. And then the porthole, this is $250. Portholes are very collectible, not just here in Florida, really all over the place. The pulley lamp is a cool thing too. Let's see what this space has. 20% off, okay. A lot of crystal decanters. Picture of a couple of guys in their olive drab. This fun double oval mid-century mirror. We see these in Florida fairly often. This one's priced at $350. Minus 20% makes it $280, which is about right. Neat old legal size clipboard. It says use this cheese tray. I have to admit I never thought of that. That's a great idea. Look at this cute group of couples in their 1920s finery. Looks like some sort of a club with a bunch of award ribbons. old doctor's bag. This one's pretty dilapidated. People do like them though. And then this religious frame is neat. If you were looking for a neat frame with the reverse painting, it's 1920s and that's a nice shape. Very neo-gothic. These little nesting pans are nice for doing sort of sizzling plates. This is a made in Italy set from the 70s in perfect condition, priced at 45. That's about the going rate. Old Polaroid camera for 20. In here again we see a mix of new and old. I'm more interested in the old stuff so let's see what we can find. Little round stoppered decanter. This is Watt pottery with the hand painting. The tulips, the pattern you don't see as often, and the smaller pieces are not always signed. So you kind of just have to know they have that free form on that buff color. Now this guy is fun. We see a lot of carved bottle stoppers, but this is the whole setup. You've got the bottle opener with the wine bottle on it that comes off, and then the rest of it is just the stand, somebody named H. I guess you would have probably put toothpicks or cocktail forks in there. Very happy hand painted. This one's Italian, probably by Henri rather than the German Black Forest that we see, and he's $30. Really a fair price on that. Not something I can buy for resale, but neat. These are George Rumrill, done for him by Shawnee Pottery, I believe. No, wait, I'm sorry, that's a red wing shape. He did stuff with Shawnee also. We see this and people confuse it for Namaji pottery out of Minnesota or Mission Ware by Nilok, but this is actually Fort Ticonderoga. There were a few different tourist attractions around the country that did these clay pots with this swirled coloration. This one's false graph. Back when they had the ink stamp long, long ago. Fun little Italian dish from the 70s. Let's see what else we've got here. Ooh, I like this guy. Brown Panther. This is going to be Hager, and it's 65. That's about the right price. I, I think he's Hager. I just sold one of him in February in Renegers, not too far from here. Some fun clocks. I like this one, especially 1968 Abstract Brutalist. Made of plastic, but it's a great look. And then the Starburst next to it. Only 49, but that looks like it might be. It says George Nelson. But I wonder if this is a reproduction, because they are doing new ones of these. 
made in Taiwan, so indeed this is not an old one. You know, the prices on the old ones have gotten to where I guess it was inevitable that someone was going to make something that looked like them again. And I wanted to show this because you'll see this signature on Bijan brass wall sculptures. It's heavier and thicker than Jure was. Jure was more like this piece. This is not a Jure, but they did more of this thinware. Whereas this is thick, heavy brass. And Bijan was big on doing golf related, especially. So this one is called Pebble Beach, priced at 165. This is cool. I don't know whether this is original or from the 70s, but I think it's a reprint because look how big and grainy the dot pattern in his face is. However, it now has some age. Oh, in fact, there's a zip code on it. So yes, it is a reprint probably from the 70s when there started to be a lot of interest in the silent era movies. But it's still a neat graphic. The old yellow wall phone. You want 80 on that. The prices have really gone up on wall phones lately. This place has a almost sarcophagus looking figure there. But I'm more curious what's in their showcase. They have some nice old cameos. $50 on the larger one. She's got nicely curled and braided hair with a flower in it. That makes her a little more special. There's an old Boy Scout pin. Kind of a neat cast iron bank up here with the old sailor on it. Along with the eagle, which is a topper for a flagpole, I believe. One cute little dresser box. I kind of like these Lucite blocks out of the 70s with the birds and flowers made in them. It's got a little place in the back for your lipstick. So ostensibly it was a lipstick holder. Really just something to look cute on your dresser. And in front of it we see this is a lipstick holder because it's got room for three and it's got a rose in the bottom. These are priced at about 10 to $20 and that's kind of what they go for now. This two count is cool. Let's see what he's priced. $20. He is Rinconada. This is done in Latin America. And I'm not sure that they're still in production. I believe they were mainly a thing in the 1990s, but these are starting to be collectible. The deep texturing and the cute faces are really appealing to people. I sold a bunch of these for $15 to $20 myself in the last six months. So thank you all for being with me. I'm George the Antique Nomad on social media, on Periscope, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We'll have more of the Thrift Shopping Day coming in our next video, so we'll see you then. Thanks now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!